Welcome to 4.7. Today we're going to look for local extrema. Local maxes on a surface are the largest point around, local mins are the smallest point around, and saddles look like local maxes from one direction and they look like local mins from the other direction, so they're neither. And so before we jump into that, let's do a flashback to single variable calculus and recall how finding the local extrema worked in that case. So suppose we want to find the local extrema of this function. The first step was to find the critical points. Those were the numbers in the domain where the first derivative was zero or it didn't exist. Okay, so I went ahead and I found the first derivative and I factored it so that I could find the zeros. And I see that the first derivative is zero at x equals zero or one. That doesn't mean I have a local max or local min. I have to check it with a first derivative number line. That was step two. So I plot the critical points and I'm going to test the sign of f prime. So I have to take a test point from each subinterval. For example, for this last interval, I might take x equal two. For the middle one, I might take x equal to a half. And for the first interval, I might take x equal negative one. And I went ahead and did that and I found I got two negatives and a positive. So that means the function's decreasing, decreasing. At zero, it just levels off and it keeps decreasing. So I have no local max or local min there. And then at one, the function's decreasing. Recall, when the first derivative is negative, that means you have a decreasing function. And then it's increasing. So I have a local min at x equal one. And I have a picture of, I have a graph of that function over here. And you can see, indeed, we have a local min at x equal one. To find the y-coordinate, you have to plug x equal one back into the original function up here to get y. Okay, so now let's look at two variables. The definition of a critical point is slightly different. Again, it has to be a point in the domain of the function, and it's a critical point if both partials are zero, so and, or one of the partials doesn't exist, so that's an or. Those are going to be the places we have to check for local maxes, local mins, or saddles. So let's go ahead, and before we do the second derivative test that will tell us what we have, let's just practice finding critical points. So in this first example, we've got f sub x equal negative 3x squared plus 2y, and I want to set that equal to zero. f sub y is 2x minus 4y, and again, I want to set that equal to zero. Both of these equations have to be true. So I'm going to call this 1 and I'm going to call this 2. I think the easiest way to solve this, to solve this system, would be to look at equation 2. So by equation 2, we can solve for y. y is a half x. And we can plug that into equation 1. When we do that, we get negative 3x squared plus x equals 0. Factor out an x. Negative 3x plus 1 is 0. So we see x is either 0 or 1 third. Now we can use the fact that y equals 1 half x to get the y coordinates of those critical points. So we'll come up here, our critical points are when x is 0, y is 0. And when x is a third, y is 1 half that, which would be 1 sixth. So those are our critical points. OK, let's do one more. Suppose we have a function that's defined everywhere and we're given the partials. So we're given fx and fy, what are the critical points? So f sub x is zero. I could just read the zeros right off that equation. f sub x is zero at x equal one and two. And f sub y is zero at y equal to zero or negative one. So we're actually gonna get four critical points here. If f sub x is zero, then x is one or two. So suppose x is one, then y could be either 0 or negative 1. So we get 1, 0, and 1, negative 1. And if x is 2, y could be 0 or negative 1. So we get 2, 0, and 2, negative 1. So those are our critical points. All right, now let's look at the second derivative test. That will tell us whether we have a local max, a local min, or a saddle. Now the second derivative test only works for the type of critical point where the partials are 0. It does not work when the partials don't exist. So keep that in mind. So the first thing you're going to do is form the discriminant. The discriminant is fxx times fyy minus fxy quantity squared. And there are four cases. If the discriminant at a certain point is positive and the second order partial with respect to x, fxx, is positive, then you have a local min. So you can use that same 
mnemonic device, two positives is a local min. If the discriminant is positive and fx is negative, then you have a local max. If the discriminant is negative, you've got a saddle. And if the discriminant is zero, no conclusion. And by the way, there's nothing special about fxx versus fyy, and I explain that in the end where there's further reading. So let me just jump to that. On your further reading that you don't have to read, but I thought you might be interested, I explain why there's nothing special about fxx. I give a proof of the second derivative test. And then the interesting thing is the application to regression, finding a line of best fit using second derivative test. Okay, so let's do an example. We've got f of xy equal to this function. And we've seen this function before, and we already found the critical points. They were 0, 0, and a third one sixth. We want to find the local extrema. So we want to classify those two points. So the first thing we need is the discriminant. So I'll find fx again, negative 3x squared plus 2y. And so fxx is negative 6x. f sub y is 2x minus 4y. So f sub y, y is negative 4. And then we're going to need f sub x, y. Take f, x, and take the partial with respect to y. And that's 2. All right. So our discriminant, it's f, x, x, f, y, y, minus f, x, y, quantity squared. So for us, that's negative 6x times negative 4 minus 2 squared, which is 4. So we get 24x minus 4. That's a function of x and y. There's no y there, but it's a function of x and y. And so we can plug in our critical points and test them. And so I have a little chart here, and we're going to take that discriminant and put it down on this line, 24x minus 4. I'm going to fill in fxx, that was negative 6x, and now we can go ahead and classify each point. At 0, 0, I plug 0, 0 into the discriminant. So when x is 0, d is negative 4. That's less than 0. So if you jump back to the second derivative test, when d is negative, you have a saddle. It doesn't matter what fxx is. So we have a saddle. And to get the three coordinates, I've got x and y already. And to get z, I go back to the original function up here. That's z. And I plug 0, 0 in for x and y, and I get 1. OK, now let's test the second point. When I put a third in to up here to the discriminant for x, I get 8 minus 4, which is 4. Now that's greater than 0, which means I do need to check fxx. When x is a third, fxx is negative 2, and that is less than 0, so I have a local min. And I went ahead and found the z-coordinate for us because it, it took a little bit of arithmetic. All right, we're going to finish up with an application. And I want to remind you that whenever you're maximizing or minimizing distance, which is this formula here in three variables, it's easier to maximize or minimize distance squared because you can get rid of that square root. And so that's what I'm going to do in this example here, which is an extrema with a constraint. So what points on the cone, z squared equal x squared plus y squared, are closest to negative 6, 4, 0? So this is a distance problem. Closest is distance. So the first thing I'm going to do is let f of x, y, z be the distance squared from a point on the cone to negative 6, 4, 0. And so what I did, this is my x naught y naught, z naught in this formula up here for distance squared. And that's how I got this equation. Now that equation obviously has three variables. And to use the second derivative test, we need two variables. So no worries. We can replace z squared with x squared plus y squared because we're living on the cone. All right. So this is the function we're minimizing. So let's find the critical points. f sub x is rather than multiply out this term, I'm just going to use the chain rule, 2x plus 6, and then plus 2x, and that's 4x plus 12, and I want to set that equal to 0. f sub y is 2y minus 4 plus 2y, and that's equal to 4y minus 8, and again, I want to set that equal to 0. And so this is super simple. We only have one critical point. If the first equation 0, x has to be negative 3, and if the second equation is 0, y has to be 2. 
All right, let's check that it's a local min at this critical point. Clearly, F has no max. You might want to pause and think about that statement. Clearly, F has no max. Why is that? All right, so let's just check. Second derivative test. Fx, x is 4. Fy, y is 4. And Fxy is 0. So the discriminant, D, is 4 times 4 is 16 minus 0 squared. That's 16. That's positive. Fxx is 4. That's always positive. Nothing to plug in. So indeed, we have a local min. All right, and then I went ahead and finished the problem for us. The question actually asked for the points on the cone that are closest to the point negative 6, 4, 0. So we only found the x and y coordinate. We need to find the z coordinate. And the question is, do you go back to the distance squared formula, or do you go back to the original cone formula? And the answer is you're going to go back to the original cone formula because that formula gives you the z coordinates on the cone. And we can see that we get two of them, and here they are. All right, and then finally, I did a solved example of a, one of your homework problems, and so you should read through that, make sure you understand it, and then, of course, the more reading. All right, and that's the end of this section.